Hi, my name is Franco Cavallari, uh, lead researcher at Biologic Pharma Medical. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, ketosis, ketogenesis, the ketogenic diet in the context of uh, general health and wellness and um, we'll bring a little bit of science into the process to help people uh, understand that there's a lot of research that supports what we do here with these ketogenesis and ketosis inducing agents. So um, to reiterate some of what I've said in other, other uh, videos, ketosis is the definition uh, for um, an elevated level of serum ketone levels. So typically the average person uh, walks around with a 0.1 millimole levels level of, of serum ketones and they are a byproduct of, of fatty acid oxidation um, which generally is not used as a substrate for energy in the body and is removed through, uh, through water removal and, and, your, and, and urinary activity. So typically, and, and in fact, even through the breath, acetone is expelled through your breath and it's sm you can smell acetone in the breath of many diabetics who are not metabolically fit. So ketogenesis is the process by which the body makes ketones through um, an activity called beta oxidation. And typically if we engage on a ketogenic diet or in general a re calorie restrictive diet, the body goes into fight or flight and panic mode and begins to use fat as a primary source of energy, which is a great thing for the periphery of the body, the peripheral tissues. However, the brain cannot use fat as a primary substrate for energy, for ATP synthesis. And the reason is that um, the majority of the fats cannot cross the blood-brain barrier, so the neurons don't get enough substrates for energy when you deprive them of glucose. And so a lot of people who engage in the ketogenic diet then um, will, will find that the brain is not getting the fuel it needs. And if it's not getting the fuel it needs, you get the cravings for carbohydrates that are almost impossible, almost impossible to um, avoid. So we supply a supplement called Ketoba. And Ketoba is our patented technology. And this technology basically is not a regular ketone salt. It is the ketone salt coupled to butyrate, the short chain fatty acid. I'm gonna explain why that's important in a moment. Um, if you take regular ketone salts to raise serum ketone levels, so if we take a supplement of ketone salts, those ketones end up, the ketone body, um, beta-hydroxybutyrate, ends up in the bloodstream and is converted into the other ketones. And the body begins to use those ketones. It can use them as an energy source if the concentration is high enough and if glucose is, is, is low enough in the bloodstream. And so the cool thing is that the body typically will make these ketones endogenously or internally as a means by which it can serve the brain. So if you engage in a ketogenic diet where you have a high fat intake, low carbohydrate intake, the brain is not getting the carbohydrate sources, the glucose it needs, and it requires that ketone, not the fat, because the fat can't cross the blood-brain barrier. So the liver will, through beta oxidation, convert fat into a, a ketone. Um, the ketone then will travel into the brain and be used as a substrate for energy. The cool thing is that, you know, we now know in cases of dementia, um, there's what we call type 3 diabetes uh, active in the brain. And type 3 diabetes is basically a similar process by which we have uh, type 2 diabetes uh, manifesting. And the pathology is similar. You have insulin resistance, but this time type 3 in the brain. And it's not really known if uh, this type 3 diabetes is a factor that contributes to the escalation and evolution of dementia or it's a consequence of other factors like inflammation that uh, contribute to the effects of dementia, the ill effects and the pathology of dementia. Nevertheless, if we bypass the need for glucose in the brain by supplying these ketones, the ketone can actually enter the bloodstream or enter the neuron independent of, in, of insulin signal, doesn't require insulin and then that ketone can serve as an ATP substrate. That neuron can make as much as 38% more ATP from every carbon in the ketone than it can with glucose with lower oxygen levels, oxygen requirement. And so the brain then can function, the lights are brighter. People who have dementia, uh, recall shortage, shortfalls, uh, definitely claim improvement 
in their condition when they use this exogenous ketone. The challenge is, by taking a regular exogenous ketone, you shut down the ketogenic process. When you raise serum ketone levels, the body says no more ketogenesis, we don't need any more. The feedback system shuts down the ketogenic process, and now you, in, you, you stop what we call lipolysis and fatty acid oxidation in the body. We don't want to do that, especially if we're looking for weight management and management of type 2 diabetes or management of metabolic syndrome. So the beautiful thing we have as a patented agent at Biologic is we take that ketone salt, couple it to butyrate, and then butyrate itself, that short chain fatty acid, butyrate or butanoic acid, then becomes a ligand that signals the liver to tell it to keep making ketones. So not only then do you have the exogenous ketone that primes the brain and you're ready to go, now you have a signal that tells your body to continue to make it. You're training your body to make the ketones. Instead of shutting down the ketogenic process if you take the regular old ketone salt on its own. That's the difference between those two technologies. And why then do we want to induce ketosis while also inducing ketogenesis. And the reason is that we want our body to get used to using fat as a primary source of energy because your body never runs out of that resource, even if you're really lean, whether you're on a run, you're, you're on, a, on, a, on a bike, on an, any endurance activity, that fat uh, resource never rare, rarely runs out. It's always there. And it keeps that fat off the body so that you stay trim, fit, and it's easier to maintain your target fitness goals that way. Um, not to mention then, you improve cognitive capacity, uh, you induce autophagy. There's, you're not going to induce autophagy and restoration of tissue with ketones on, them, uh, on their own. You take serum ketone, you take uh, exogenous ketones to raise serum ketone levels, that does not induce autophagy. It's not that. It's the deprivation of your caloric intake and, and scarcity of carbohydrates, scarcity of food in general, that will induce sirtuin protein uh, activity. And those sirtuins then uh, have a whole slew of beneficial effects in the body from anti-aging to regulation of inflammation to regulation of, of anabolism, restoration, recovery, uh, in, induction of, of in, um, um, uh, glutathione and other antioxidant agents that serve as endogenous um, saviors for our body and uh, neutralizers of free radicals, quenchers of free radicals. So um, there's, there's a lot of value in getting on a ketogenic diet. There's a lot of value in using ketoba with a ketogenic diet. If you're on a ketogenic diet, there's no sense in using exogenous ketone salts because they actually inhibit or counteract the effects of the ketogenic diet. But ketoba, the ketogenic salt bound to the uh, butyrate, the short chain fatty acid, is definitely compatible and can serve as a facilitator for ketogenesis, ketosis, cognitive uh, stimulation, fat loss where the regular beta hydroxybutyrate salt cannot, it will actually inhibit fat loss and, and fatty acid oxidation. Um, so I hope I've covered at least topically what we may ask and may want to know about um, the ketogenic diet, ketosis, and ketogenesis and how it relates to our uh, supplementation of it with exogenous ketones and with ketoba, the exogenous ketone coupled to the short chain fatty acid butyrate. Thank you.